Since my 2012 high school graduation, my life has gotten more interesting with new ups and downs for learning experiences. Someone suggested that I talk about my life after high school in a video, and so here it is. My journey with autism continued. I applied to Mount Allison University in Sackville, New Brunswick, and Dalhousie University out of province, in case of rejection from either school. In the end, I got accepted into the Bachelor of Music program at Mount Allison University. Thus began my four-year rollercoaster ride-slash-thriller of music, humanities, and time management wake-up calls. Music was the major calling for me, hence my degree and my current profession. I found music theory class and music history very stimulating in ways I am still learning to digest. For example, I was taught the harmonic and melodic language slash practice of 18th and 19th century European classical musicians with earlier music on the side in music history class, and touches of contemporary 20th and 21st century music sprinkled in. I also learned practical ways to compose new music from a professional composer slash professor named Dr. Kevin Morse. He also taught courses in orchestration, arranging, music in Canada, and world music. I actually took those courses, although I had to drop out of world music 2021 because I was overloaded with emotional stress from a hybrid workload and time management issues. Still, Dr. Morse also helped me put my emotions in perspective when I had rough moments, whether from being overwhelmed in crunch time, struggling with nutrition, or just struggling to learn emotional management skills and put ideas that I learn into practice emotionally and socially. The humanities portion of my studies included philosophy, sociology, history, and political science, with spiritual and religious studies to round it all off and put it in a way that I can understand emotionally. Philosophy taught me about the value of experience as it challenges thought experiments even as it inspires them. Sociology taught about content analysis and how social pressures from various directions and structures can impact our behavior, which also influences the structures of the feedback loop, like a microphone pointed at a speaker. Don't forget, structures are built by people. So... They can be changed by people as well, as various social movements continue to show. Further on that point, history taught me about various possible starting points for issues we face today, as well as conveying how long social movements have gone on for and how they've evolved. For example, humans have been struggling for freedom in various societies, as long as there have been societies, and they've had their ups and downs, and continue to have their ups and downs. Whether it's the efforts to abolish slavery, or having women have a voice on par with men and other genders as well, and non-binary people aiming to be respected gets and help society understand them and such. Laura Coretta comes to mind as an example of women standing up for their rights in a patriarchal society. Some of her surviving works include satirical invectives, as well as her advocacy for equal education for women to put them on par with men and to live in healthy relationships. 
And this was back in the early modern period, which scholars tend to prefer as a term over the term, quote, Renaissance. Because there are various elements conflicting with the sense of rebirth implied by the term Renaissance. And these factors are beyond the scope of this video. But basically this goes to show that names can be pretty finicky. And what the general public likes to refer to things as, and what the scholars like to call it, can be two different things. Political science class taught me about institutions and their many issues, especially contemporary ones, such as why there are people fleeing their home countries and making dangerous journeys to get to a foreign culture. It's because people are displaced by conflict, and there's also the drive for freedom in various ways. We have various needs in connection with this. We have our food needs, we also have our social needs, we also have spiritual needs, and various emotional needs that are beyond the scope of this video. Still, the human drive to seek freedom is still quite strong, and is here to stay. Hence the need to continue welcoming each other, wayward or otherwise. Religious studies also taught me about various spiritual means of coping with challenges, as well as the inspirations behind various movements, like the liberation theology that's been inspired by the Bible, in, as is exemplified by tunes such as Amazing Grace, as well as the critical thinking required to not fall for limited visions of what the Bible can be taken as, especially ones that lead to weaponization by various factions of society. To put these lessons into practice, I needed to manage my time by waking up early at a regular time every day, if possible, remembering to eat my meals, not skipping meals, and get to classes on time, as well as working on assignments, all while trying not to get depressed over juggling academic, musical, and social needs. In practice, this was so di challenging and difficult that my meltdowns nearly got me expelled, so the Mian Center found a mentor for me to help me cope. We had various intriguing conversations, gave each other moral support, and collaborated musically on the odd chapel service. I would play the organ, and this mentor would play the cello. This eventually led to me getting a few church service gigs in Riverview, New Brunswick, professionally. And I got those gigs by calling the local United Church and offering myself up. Eventually, I got a gig with the same mentor in Amherst. Speaking of church service music, you may recall from my documentary that I played in high school band and I'd been used to following the director. However, in church, I was the director of music for that time, leading the choir in time as I learned the hard way, I learned that I'm not following a group, I'm leading a group in that case. Still, it was an auspicious admission to the world of work in my eyes. Eventually, I heard about Open Sky Cooperative from this mentor, and when I graduated, I had the time and the need to get more direction in my life. I told my parents about this, they looked into it, agreed, and the rest is history, from my perspective, or at least a bridge to my current chapter in my life. Open Sky Cooperative was an opening for me up to many firsts in my life, 
It was my first time doing farm work, feeding chickens, donkeys, and goats. First time doing a lot of manual labor. Growing local organic food with help from compost was also a first for me. Watering crops was also a first for me. Crop rotation was something I also learned about and got to help put into practice. Cover crops were also a learning thing for me. And it was my first time in the cooperative movement. I had heard about cooperatives on the radio. However, it was my first time being in the cooperative movement for real. I also learned about budgeting for the first time. Out of the sky. I also learned about mental health first aid and took a course there. And I also learned how to use my first smartphone. This was in the summer of 2016. The impetus for learning to use a smartphone was to organize myself. So I learned how to use alarms on it and also convert parts of my compositions into ringtones so I could organize myself. And I would use this to tell who's calling before I even saw who was calling, just hearing the sound. In 2017, I got into the apartment scene for the first time, and I eventually learned to move closer to downtown for a better location and more practical living arrangement. I also began learning the art and craft of busking at the Sackville Farmer's Market. Eventually, I also joined the Sackville Citizens Band, which eventually led to jam sessions on jazz standards with Paul Jensen, who was the director of the Sackville Citizens Band at the time. It still is. It still was when the band was still playing before 2020. This eventually led to a professional gig at the Sackville Chalk Art Festival professionally. I also got to hear Brian Chase perform live, which was a first for me. Brian Chase is my current mentor at Open Sky, and with all things musical. Between musical engagements, I also learned entrepreneurship in Powerhouse Cooperative as a cleaner, which grew out of Open Sky's employment program, which is now known as Be Your Own Boss or BYOB for short. I also learned how to make a business plan from various ideas and how to pitch these ideas to people. I also learned about customer service as well as marketing. And marketing strategies include things like making business cards, making posters, and finding places to put the posters up around town hoping to get some work. Eventually, I learned how to get started creating social media content to build my online presence and fan base, starting with a wedding promotional video. This was back in 2019. Then I branched out into other musical adventures, from my altered tuning challenge to lo-fi hip-hop to popular music covers, as well as video game music from my childhood. Thus, the journey continues. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. And I'll put further links for reading in the description below. sources. Thank you. Wish you all good health. And connection.